So you're asking yourself, what is the worst name fishing technique ever? And, and you know what? It, it might be the, to some of you guys, it might be the best name fishing technique. I'll leave that to you. That, I'm not going to delve into that. But, you know, it's really applicable to right now. We're in that fall, going into, for some of us, into that winter transition. And this is something you can do throughout fall as well as into winter. And it's a way that you can fish baits that you already have in your box, setups that you're already casting, already using. And it gives them just a different look, and it triggers fish to bite. So come along with me. Stay tuned. I think you're going to watch this. It's something that you can apply, and you can do it with your favorite lure. So it's not just something you can do with the lures that I show you. You're going to enjoy this. Come along with me let's talk the worst name fishing technique in all of bass fishing what's going on my homies welcome to Mikey Vols fishing a uh, little favor real quick uh, a lot of you guys haven't subscribed to the videos if you enjoy hashtag real fishing content just no BS straight up I like to talk about fishing yeah, you know, hang out with Bog and really just share kind of my experiences on the water. If you enjoy those kinds of videos, hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe. That's what I try to create 99.9% .9 of the time. Um, if you don't like that stuff, please leave now. Like, go on, I'll give you a second. Okay, one, two, all right, later. All right, so now back to my homies because you guys are kind of the hardcore audience that, that watches these videos. I, I know you're wondering what the technique is and, and I'll get to it in just a second, but I want to talk about the context kind of that I figured out the technique. If you guys, it's something actually I've done before, but I really didn't put my finger on it, how it applies, because I'm, I'm learning right now. I'm learning about fishing further up north, up around in Alabama, Gunnersville, um, Smith Lake. But if you guys tuned in, you probably saw a video out on Smith Lake, as well as a lot of you guys watched my Lanier video. And um, we, were, we were fishing kind of isolated structures or fishing like pockets and that. And there, there were fish around and I could see them on the graph or I could, like I knew they were like, there was bait in the area, so I knew there were bass in the area, but I had a lot of trouble getting them to bite. And one thing that you can do that seems to work as you get into the kind of cooler water periods, it, and this is the worst name technique, it's stroking, dude. Stroking the bait. Yeah, you, you can see where that all goes. So, you know, take it as you will. But what's kind of interesting about it is stroking is a technique. Let's break it down real quick. Basically, you can take almost any lure and do it. I'm going to show you a few baits that, that I like to do it with that just they work better for me. It doesn't mean you can't do it with literally almost anything that you use fishing. But basically what it comes down to is instead of just your reeling standard retrieve that you'll use when you're bass fishing, like a, a reaction style lure, what you'll do is you'll, you'll do that reel retrieve and then at some point, either with your rod tip to the side or up or even sometimes down, you will just go almost like a spoon. Like you'll just snap that thing, pop it, stroke it if you will. And what that does is it causes this awesomely erratic sort of random darting super fast action in the bait and as we know bass are predators right you know they're, they're forced to make split second decisions when they see either a, a, like a forage like a brim like a shad or when they see our baits in the water and they either eat or they don't eat like it's that boom like they're not sitting at a dinner table wait well sometimes they are i love fish that are all potted up sitting at a dinner table waiting to eat our baits but in a lot of situations they're not and you got to trigger them you know triggered bro so what happens in fall there's two situations there's the fall and then there's the winter deal in fall you get and we've talked about it, all these this bait in the back of pockets you know, moving into creeks and things along those lines and i'm sure you've had the experience where you see all these schooling fish you know eating eating and they will not touch your, your presentation like you're like literally throwing into like four or five three pounders that are just blasting bait on the top and they're like yeah no we don't want what you have to give and it's like oh cool i'm in a chick like that once so like basically what it is is when you're stroking that bait i think what it does is it just forces I don't know, another level of decision on the bass, or it, it maybe even triggers them to look away from some of that bait. So what I've been doing um, is basically like, I'll find some of those pods of, of bait, and yes, I'll catch a few just reeling, the, like say like a jig or a swim bait or something through it. But what I noticed is kind of setting my bait apart by using that stroking technique, popping it up. Like I said, if you guys watched the Smith Lake video, it was a perfect illustration of, of like, literally there's, 30 40 fish out there 
I would throw my bait and reel it, nothing would happen. I would throw my bait, pop it up, just use that rod to put some, I, I call it English, put a little English into the bait, and all of a sudden, dude, boosh, I get smashed, boosh, and I miss two fish, and then I catch one. And I think it sets the, the lure apart in those heavy bait situations that we run into in fall. And then when we get into winter, winter is kind of an interesting time because it's a lot like, like summer in my opinion. And in winter, like literally you fish the, two, the baits like two different ways. You're either fishing so slow that you want to just end yourself, dude. You're like, oh my God, like this is the slowest. Like don't drink coffee, don't wake up in the morning. Just co you know, go to the boat ramp, have to sleep and start fishing. Or you fish in more of a, a super duper reaction style. And even though the water's super cold, it almost seems like when you're moving that bait super erratically, those fish will react. Now you need to be tight with them. You need to like kind of know where they are and you need to have that bait near to them. But it seems like in winter, either super slow like molasses or, or a reaction bite like we're talking about with stroking seems to work. So it's a perfect technique to kind of address this transition from fall to winter that we get. So what are some baits that I do this with? Like I said, if you guys watch the Smith Lake video, one of the easiest ones to start with, and I think one of the most fun, is just a little swim bait. And you guys have seen this a lot. This is my confidence bait, but you can do it with just about any swim bait. Uh, with Salzman swim bait, with an easy swimmer, a little easy. This is a Kai Tech, um, any kind of hollow body, whatever you want. The one thing that I will recommend, um, I don't know if I got one. It's Yeah, they all have stuff on them. So like for instance, this is, actually I got one on my A-Rig right here. So that's, a, that's my goat head right there. This has a screw lock keeper on it I would highly recommend using a jig head that has a screw lock keeper and there's one big reason for that when you're stroking this bait you're using the rod in a, in a very erratic action you're you know popping it up really hard and what that usually causes is the bait like the swim bait to slip down the hook and let me tell you i always talk about efficiency and i get annoyed super easy when i'm fishing so if i have to like correct the bait and resituate the bait every time I'm, I'm doing this technique it's no bueno no bueno at all so using something with a screw lock keeper is really going to help also you can do this with hollow bodies as i mentioned it's a little bit easier if you have a full body swim bait like an easy or a kai tech or something like that because that screw lock keeper just grabs the bait a little bit better but i'd recommend you using something that does have a screw lock keeper it just seems to work a lot better but a swim bait is probably my number one way to do this it's super easy i can fish it on the bottom you know with with enough weight i can get down on the bottom i slow reel it along the bottom i'll pop it right up or as you saw in the smith lake video and i also tried it on the near a bit is i'll stay like say five to ten foot above a structure uh maybe like a rock bar a shell bar something along those lines and I will friggin reel, reel, reel. Oh, uh, first of all, I'll count it down. I'll get it to the bottom. I'll do like maybe 10 to 15 reels to get it above, like to, uh, to the approximate depth line the, the, like, that I think they're suspended at. And then when I get to where I think the juice is, I'll go pop, pop, pop. And I'll give it maybe like a one, 1,000, two, 1,000 count to go back down. I'll start my slow pulsated reel, pop, pop, pop. And I'll, I'll pop it up and they're either gonna smoke it or nothing's gonna happen. So that's kind of the approach, but the swim bait's the most versatile. The the other one that I've been using, and this this is especially like a fall and winter deal, is uh, this, this Cumberland Pro, it's a, it's a tailspin kind of float and fly jig, basically like a hair jig, or I also have, where's my other guy? That he's gonna kill me because I have literally never said the right name of his jigs. He makes these killer hair jigs. It's like Octoraro, or not Octoraro, it's Rocco. I'll put a link to it. Dude, all my stuff is so screwed up. I'm so classy in these videos, right? Uh, he makes these killer hair jigs and they have like nicer uh, black nickel hooks in them. I don't know if you guys can see that, but they're basically like Fox. Um, I forget all the different, the ties that he does, but you can do it with a hair jig as well, these micro hair jigs. And then the other one I've been doing it with is my Gambler JTK hair jig, which is this guy right here. 
Um, this is a little bit heavier for a little bit more depth oriented stuff anywhere from like say 15 to say 30 feet of water The nice part about a hair jig though is you're usually sometimes you are but usually you're not fishing it on the bottom So don't, you don't need to use something super heavy like the one I just showed you I think it's five ace that'll cover me as long as the current isn't crazy or anything down to like Like I said like 30 foot a little quarter ounce or this little tailspin uh, This is uh, this will cover me. I mean even on spot lakes and stuff I can fish this down to 30 but usually it's more like a 10 to 15 10 to 20 kind of deal it really depends on the forage size you know that you're looking at and whether you want to use bait casting or spinning tackle on the little hair jigs i do run actually let's run through that real quick on smaller little hair jigs like this guy i run them on a medium light seven foot i think it's a halo uh, black widow or something like that but basically like it's not ultra light but it's on the brink of ultra light and has a very moderate taper i'll run those on eight pound floor or eight pound yeah eight pound fluorocarbon leader to a 15 or a 12 pound um, braid uh, as a backing line and that no stretch and that soft rod really because what happens with this is if they're really biting you're going to feel a tick you know you'll pop that bait up pop 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 and you'll feel it as it's like falling it'll be either right at the top of the pop or as it's falling like one with that you'll feel a tick but usually especially in colder water like temperatures it's really going to be like you pop 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 and it settles down settles down and your line will either stop before it hits the bottom or you'll, your line will go down and you'll just start kind of reeling to do your slow reel and literally everything will load up like it'll just go tight the fish is swimming with it and you just pull back you don't even set the hook you just pull back and these are all open hook presentations so it's super easy to set the hook you pull back and use the weight of the fish and the tension of the rod to just load up on them and set the hook now on my swim bait presentation i will use on the micro swim bait i'll throw that on that 610 actually i think i got one right here these are those new setups with those diwa eliminators so that's a 610 um halo ks2 i think elite yeah it's yes it's ks2 uh 610 medium action same braid deal so i got like 15 pound braid to an eight pound fluorocarbon leader um having a nice drag on those does matter because we've talked about it before um these hooks are kind of they're not light wire, but they're somewhere in between light wire and standard wire. These are Scottsboro ball heads. Um, if you're running the goat though, um, I do recommend more of a bait casting setup. I will throw it on a little heavier spinning rod, maybe a medium heavy, but on the goat, I got one rigged up right here. I run that joker on a seven, I think this is a seven three, seven two medium heavy. Um, that's Salzman swim bait right there. That's a half ounce goat. A uh, 15 pound fluorocarbon. I got that on a Shimano SLX. Uh, the rod just has a, it's not a, a moderate taper, but it's like a moderate fast taper. So basically it loads up pretty well. It has kind of a little soft bend to the tip. And I really find that's a lot better when, um, when you're doing this technique because one, you don't put too much action with the bait caster on the lure when you're jerking it up. And then two, like I said, a lot of the bites that you're gonna get this time of year, they're not really gonna be ticks, they're gonna be weight bites. Like kind of like they talk about that classic jig bite, you know, like you don't feel them hit it, you just feel weight. That's what the old timers would say. And, that, and that's true. Um, it also applies on a swim bait with a jig head, you know? So really it's gonna be reeling down and you just kind of sweep with that rod when you feel that, that line and that, that bait load up and you're not really setting the hook, you're just, you're pulling back, if you will. Because when these fish get it, they get it. It's a reaction, they're gonna snatch it, and, and they're just gonna swim with it, dude. So you just kind of pull back. But those are the baits that I use in the setups. Um, you can do it with anything though. I emphasized that at the beginning of the video. If you guys go way back in the videos, I had a summer video where I went out and fished Pickwick and didn't catch any like giant giants, but um, it caught some fish stroking a football jig. It's a little bit different because it does have a brush guard on it, but basically we took a football jig and we put a stinger, like a stick bait on the back, and we do the exact same thing, but on the bottom. So we throw that choker out, throw it onto a shell bar, and we pop, pop, pop. And that was with a seven foot medium heavy TI. So it's a slightly stiffer rod because you have a little bit bigger hook and um, you also have the brush guard on there, but you go pop, pop, pop and you just let it go down and that was summer so I would feel them tick. So if you have fish more oriented to, to the bottom or if you have cover around, you can play around with a football jig and, and something to keep in mind too and it's I think something that a lot of people forget, don't be afraid this time of year to, to take like a football jig that's got say like a green pumpkin skirt on it or something 
Actually, I didn't do it with this one. Oh, this is kind of an example though. Okay, so that's kind of what we were using when we were stroking the jig. So you got a football jig, you got just a stick bait like that. And I like doing it with the stick bait. You can put it on a swim bait on the back too, but with the stick bait or even like a fluke, it makes that bait dart really erratically. And when it comes down that stick bait, we all know like Senkos and that, they kind of wiggle as they go down. I think it has kind of a cool presentation, but don't be afraid to take your jig and grab a white fluke and then rip that skirt off and we, we've talked about making up like custom skirts grab like some smoke maybe some um some white with a little bit of like glitter in it or something like that and make yourself like a shad looking like jig basically and do the same thing especially if you're fishing around wood and stuff it's just a different way to present that jig and that reaction i don't think they see they see tons of football jigs they see tons of swim baits i don't think they see quite as many like hair jig style kind of deals even like my jtk hair jig but they see a lot of those other kinds of presentations and like we've talked about before in the videos it's not always about like the new most awesome thing like oh all of a sudden the chatterbait comes out and it changes the game oftentimes it's about just reimagining some of the the tackle and the and the lures that we have in our box and presenting them differently it's not as cool as having like a totally new bait but i think it's almost as cool because it's a way of learning to fish a bait that you've never actually tried and these bass oftentimes have not seen that much of which leads to them chewing it because the same bait can look very different when presented in a different way but i i think that kind of caps it up stroking literally the worst named technique in fishing let me know if you think it is the worst name or if you think you have a better name for it let's let's get a little degenerate down in the comments box i always like that i'll put links to the stuff that i use for stroking a lure um to these fish down in the in the description box at tackle warehouse you guys can take a look at what i use if you guys got any other suggestions for baits that you can stroke i'm sure i've missed a few oh just quick note it's a lot like fishing a spoon so if you guys are familiar with fishing a spoon literally take another bait from your tackle box a jig a swim bait or whatever and fish it like a spoon it's almost the exact same thing like it's it's the same concept of reaction and that but i'll put links to everything down in the description box and give it a try um as we get into the colder water temperatures as we get into you know if you run into a bunch of fish schooling in the back of a pocket on a bunch of bait you can't get them to bite on anything else because they're literally so keyed in onto the bait try a little bit different presentation try stroking that bait that reaction it, you know it keeps you moving a little bit faster which i like i like to fish a little bit faster but it keeps you moving faster it's a different presentation and it does work there's no doubt about it there's something about if you commit to it and and do it like yeah, you're not going to get bit always on the first time you know you got to be open to really expanding and trying and learning the technique but it definitely works because they don't see the bait like that and it's also a reaction style kind of deal so it's going to trigger fish that won't bite kind of your slow retrieve your drag retrieve your classic retrieves but thank you guys for watching this as i mentioned earlier in the video if you like these kinds of videos if you like talking fishing learning about fishing seeing stuff in practice in reality not just like hey bro go buy this bait it's awesome because we don't really do that so you know if you like that kind of stuff please hit that subscribe button this is a grassroots channel like we don't do all the fancy schmancy stuff like everybody else we just go fishing and learn about stuff and try to get better at what we what we really love to do because that's what at least my game is i don't know what yours is but i hope it's the same thank you guys for watching though we are out i'm gonna actually go fishing <laughs> so peace thanks